Now that you've created a Google document, let's explore some of the different ways you can share this. Now, on the previous page, I asked you to think of at least a theoretical use for the document that you created, because depending on the purpose for your document, that's going to dictate how you're going to adjust the sharing settings. And I'm going to go through all four of those examples that I listed on that page. So let's just start with a typical example. This is a agenda for a team meeting. So this is something I want to share with a small group of people, and I want everyone to be able to edit it. Now, if you'll notice, every time you start a document, it defaults to being private, and you can hover over the blue share button over on the right to see what the current permissions are for this document. Currently, it is set private only to me, so only I can access and edit this document. Document. And to change the sharing settings, all I need to do is to select this blue button. Again, I'm given a summary of what the current sharing settings are, and to add people, I simply just need to start typing in their names. Once I find the right match, I can just select that person, and I can begin adding more members if more than one person needs to see this document. Now before I hit the share and save green button, I'll just kind of notice a couple of my options here. Right now, it defaults to when I type in specific people that they're going to be able to edit it. If I didn't want them to be able to edit it, I could just let them comment or view it. I do want them to be able to edit it, so I'm going to leave that. And it asks if I want to notify them. This will send a message to their Gmail so they know there's a document in their drive waiting for them. And I do want them notified, so I'm just going to click the share and save button. You can see also in the sharing settings screen is a link to the document, so I could email that to them also separately through my OWA account. That is how they can directly access this document. And when I have the sharing settings adjusted how I like it, I can simply click Done. If I notice that I accidentally added someone who doesn't need to view this document, you can remove an editor just by clicking the X. And I'm going to save my changes. Now when I hover over the blue Share button in the upper right, I can see that it's still a private document to me and one other person. So it's still not public on the web. Basically, there's just a couple of us who can see and edit this document. Let's look at another way you might want to share a document. So let's pretend these are chapter two questions, and I want to share this document with my entire class, or at least a very large group. And I don't want to have to go through and type in their names individually. Maybe I'm going to have group one do this set of questions and group two another. So I'm not quite sure exactly who's going to need the questions. I just want the document to be edited quickly by others. So here's a way that you might do that. So so I'm again going to select the blue share button. And right now it's again private only to me, but I want people to be able to edit this document, a large group of them. So I'm going to go in and instead of typing in individual names under adding people, I'm going to go over to where it says private and I'm going to change this setting. And I have various different options here. I can make this a public document on the web. I can make it anyone with the link, people just within Jeffco who have that link, so they would still need to sign into their Jeffco account or anyone in Jeffco schools. I'm going to go ahead and set it anyone with the link. It basically is like an unlisted phone number. No one's going to be able to find it through search. But anyone I give this link to is going to be able to find my document. And down here at the bottom, you'll see a very important setting called Access. So right now, when I pick one of these larger settings where kind of anyone can see it, Google's going to default it to where they can just view it. But if I want a group of students to be able to edit this, a large group, I just need to change that from they can view it to they can edit this. And then I'm going to click Save and click done. So now on my classroom website I could just put that sharing link and that sharing link is available right here, the link to share. It's also available at the top of the document right here. I could post that on my website and anyone who clicked on that would go to this set of questions and will be able to edit it. And I can have various different sets of questions for different groups. But that is a quick way to share with a large group of people to avoid having to individually enter their names. Let's look at a third type of document that you might want to share. So this is the Google Lingo document that I created for you as part of session one. And I want everyone to be able to see this document, but I don't want anybody to be able to make changes to my document. So this would be appropriate for something like a course syllabus or some kind of handout, an informational packet that you want to share with parents and students, where you want everybody to be able to see it, but you don't want everybody you don't really want anybody to be able to make changes. So let's go ahead and look at how you could share this document. Again, visit the blue share button. And I don't want this to be a private document. I want to change that. And I want to make this document public on the web so that, so that parents or anyone could just simply click the link I send them in an email or that is linked to my website and they'll be able to view this. Again, I'm going to double check my access to make sure it's not set where they can edit it. Right now it's just set where they can view it and I'm going to click save. So now this is a public document, but if I wanted to add one of my team members in here so they could add a few other Google lingo terms, again, I can start typing my teammate's name. 
And now, this document's public on the web for everybody to see, and these two people, me and my teammate, have the ability to edit and make changes to it. So there's a lot of flexibility with how you can set up your Google Share settings. Let's look at the fourth possible type of way you might want to share something with students. Here's a web quest. So I've created a web quest with some resources, and then I have 10 questions that I want students to answer. Now, I don't want the entire class answering their questions on this one document. I want students to fill this out individually or maybe with a partner. So basically, they need their own copy. So basically, there's two ways to do this. One is through the sharing settings, and one is through the template gallery. And for this example, we're going to look at how you can do this through the sharing settings. So I'm going to go up to the sharing settings, and I'm going to change this from a private document so that anyone with the link can view it. Now again, I don't want to set this to be editing rights. I don't want anyone with the link to edit this document. I want students just to see the document. And then when they click the link, I'm going to go ahead and click Done to finalize those sharing settings. When a student goes to open this document, they're going to be able to see everything. They won't be able to type in it. All of these editing features are going to be grayed out except for one. Under File, there will be one choice for them. Make a copy. So when they open the document, you would just direct them to File, make their own copy, and then they can proceed through the web quest and fill out the answers. So Google really gives you a lot of different ways and a lot of flexibility when it comes to sharing. And remember that these sharing settings are the same in all of the Google Docs products. So when we get to Google presentations, spreadsheets, or drawings, you will always have that blue share button and all the same options to share your work with other people. And I will also say that sharing does take a little bit of practice because many of us are used to just emailing our documents to whomever we think needs to have a copy of those or simply attaching a copy to our website where people need to download to view it. With Google Docs sharing abilities, you can really just keep the one document online and share it with whoever needs to see it. And this is great. So if you noticed a typo in first block, you can quickly correct that typo and it updates the copy for everyone who's going to view it. So you don't need to go to your website, take the one copy off, and re-upload a new copy. So it really makes revisions a lot easier. But I will say there's been several times where I've linked something to my website and students have said, we don't have permission to view that item, and I'll just need to quickly go in and change the sharing settings, and everything is good to go. So play around with sharing settings, decide what is the most appropriate sharing setting for the document you set up, and go ahead and try out a few things. In the next task, we'll look at how to use templates as another way to share items with your students.